So let's look at finding critical points of this function and, and classifying them as either min, max, or saddle. Remember, to find critical points, we're looking for places where the directional derivative in all directions is zero. That would mean that um, that would mean that the gradient is zero, which would tell us that um, at least to first order, there's no direction we could go in to either increase or decrease the value. So we're either at a max or a min, or possibly um, a level spot, a level spot like a saddle. So we'll first find the gradient. So the gradient of f. Let's see, partials with respect to x. We, the 3 comes down, so we get 6x squared minus 18x. And partials with respect to y, we get 6y squared. And um, the partial here with respect to y is going to be uh, 6y minus 12. We want to figure out where is the gradient 0, because that's where we could have a max or a min. And looks like this one's pretty easy to solve. Um, all right, so if we factor this first equation, we can pull out a 6x, and that will leave behind an x minus 3. So we either x equals 0 or x equals 3 to solve this equation. Here we can factor out a 6, and we'll have y squared plus y minus 2. And with those smaller numbers, I can see how to factor this. I'm going to have to use a plus 2 and a minus 1. So I get y equals negative 2 or y equals 1. Because the solutions here, independent from the solutions there, we can see that there are actually two choices for x and two choices for y. 2 times 2 is 4, so there are going to be four critical points. Here are the four critical points. Either x could be 0 and y could be negative 2, or x could be 0 and y could be 1, or x could be 3 and y could be negative 2, or x could be 3 and y could be 1. Now to classify them, we need to look at the second derivative. The second derivative matrix is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. Sometimes it's called the Hessian, so the Hessian matrix. This matrix of second derivatives. We have a function that has um, that depends on two variables, then there's going to be four possible um, second partial derivatives. You can have f sub xx, or f sub xy, or f sub yx, or f sub yy. So, and the behavior at these critical points really depends on this matrix. In this case, here's f sub x. So f sub xx would be the derivative of this with respect to x, which is going to be 12x minus 18. And um, let's see, f sub xy is going to be 0. And if, if we do um, f sub yx, that's going to be 0 as well. Usually these mixed partials are the same, right? Because if the function and its first and second partial derivatives are all continuous, then these mixed partials have to be the same. So in the functions we see in this class, they will always be the same. Um, and now, let's see, we, we take the partial of this with respect to y, so we get 12y plus 6. OK, so you can see that the second derivative um, depends on the value of x and y. And so with our test, remember, we end up calculating um, the determinant of this matrix. So let's look at, the, at this matrix in each of our four cases. So our first case, when x is 0, and y is negative 2. Then our second derivative matrix, if x is 0, that's negative 18, 0, 0. And since y is negative 2, we have negative 24 plus 6. That's negative 18. OK. Now, if we take the determinant of that matrix, we get 18 times 18, which is, let's see, 18 times 18 would be 4 times 81. So that's 324. Since that's greater than 0, we know that it's either always concave up or always concave down. But then if we just look at um, f sub xx, that tells us the second derivative in the x direction. The second derivative is negative there, so it's concave down in one direction. Because the determinant is positive, it's concave down in all directions. And so we know that we're in a scenario like this, which means that this is a max. So we've examined one of these and found that it's a max. Now let's look at the look at 0, 1 here. 
So if we have 0 for x, we get negative 18 again. And we get 0, 0. And if we have a 1 here, 12 plus 6 makes 18. This time, the determinant is a negative number. And, and so we know that we have a saddle. And in this case, it's really easy to see, since the off-diagonal terms were 0, it's easy to see that this is concave down in the x direction, but concave up in the y direction. And so the second order, our function is basically um, a, a hyperbolic paraboloid. So we have a saddle at this point here. OK. Um, let's see, next one, 3, negative 2. So at 3, negative 2, our Hessian matrix is we put in a 3 here, 36 minus 18 is positive 18, 0, 0. And uh, put in a negative 2 here, we have negative 24 plus 6, that's negative 18. Uh, the determinant is a negative number again. So we have another saddle. So 3, negative 2 is another saddle. Finally, let's look at the point 3, 1. At 3, 1, our Hessian matrix, if we plug in 3 for x, 36 minus 18 is 18 again, 0, 0. Plug in 1 here, and we get 18. OK, so the determinant is equal to 324, which is greater than 0. That means if it's concave up in one direction, it's concave up in all directions. We also can see that f sub xx is 18. So if you just froze y and focused on, um, on changing x, you'd see something that was concave up. So the fact that this is positive means it's concave up. If the fact that this is positive means it's concave up in one direction. The fact that the determinant is positive means it's got the same concavity in all directions. Therefore, it must be concave up in all directions. So we have a min in this case. Now it might be fun to use Maple to plot this to see, just to look at the graph and see what we see. So here's Maple, and. Uh, we're going to load the plotting package so with, with plots here. And then we can use the plot3d command. So we'll plot3d our function. It's 2 times x cubed plus 2 times y cubed minus 9 times x squared plus 3 times y squared minus 12 times y. And um, we can examine this. Let's see. Looking at our points, we need to make sure that we include 0 and 3 in the x range and 1 and negative 2 in the y range. So um, let's let x go from, say, negative uh, 1 to 4. That way we'll, we'll include 0 and 3 in that range. And we'll let, we'll let y go from negative um, 3 to 2. That way we'll include both negative 2 and 1 in our range. And let's put some axes on here. Let's try axes equal normal. Let's graph. Ah, so we have pretty interesting shape here. If we look down on it, we can locate our various critical points right, and look at what they are at those points. So the first one was at um, x equals 0, y equals negative 2. So that's one of our critical points. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, I'm looking at, I got the wrong x-axis. OK, there, I turned it. OK, x equals 0. And y equal negative 2 is right there. And yep, it's a max, huh? Can you see how it's concave down in all directions? OK, that's because it was concave down in one direction and the determinant was positive. So it had to be concave down. It had the same conc concavity in all directions. It had to be concave down. Now let's look at our point x equals 0, y equals 1. So this is my x-axis. That's my y-axis. So looking down on it, there it is. Notice that that's a saddle, isn't it? Because you can see it's concave down in one direction, but concave up in the other direction. Now look at the point 3, negative 2. So x equals 3, y equals negative 2 is right there. So looking at that point, do you see the saddle? Concave down in this direction, concave up in that direction. And then finally, 3, 1. Looking at 3, 1 right here. Oh, OK, I just got lost. Ooh, that's turning funny. Oh, no. OK. Wah. <laughs> I turned it so much I got lost. OK, let's see. 
x. Now I've got it. There's my x-axis. There's my y-axis. And here's the point 3, 1. And looking at that point 3, 1, as we, as we tilt it, it's down over here. It's a min because it's concave up in all directions there. OK. And so looking at the second derivative matrix, the Hessian, is telling us about the concavity at that point, right? If it's concave up in all directions, you have a min. If it's concave down in all directions, you have a max. And if it's concave down in some directions, but concave up in others, then you have the situation of a saddle.